Well, how about y'all? This is Daniel Nicholson with Nicholson Farms, and welcome back to another video. It's late Monday afternoon. I've been working on the pig pen, and I got our pigs moved for the first time into a, another paddock. You know, last time we talked about the pigs, we moved the little pigs into this pen there they were in. Uh, now we got them moved into the next pen in the rotation. I've got both of my gates up. I got their feeder moved in. I let them empty out their feeder yesterday, so it was light to move and uh, I still need to fill up their water. They're kind of munching around on it. But I figured I'd start the video now, uh, kind of show you the pigs. The goats are up here as well. We'll kind of talk about them. Just late afternoon finishing chores, and I figured I'd start a video. To start off with, we've got our two six-foot gates at the end of our pins. Uh, I did make some changes. I lowered these wires down uh, just a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. Lowered them down just a little bit. As you can see right here, uh, before I lowered it down, one of the pigs got on the other side and it was kind of rooting on the other side. Uh, but that was about the only spot I saw. I saw one pig go through this wire. Uh, so I figured I'd go ahead and lower it down. I lowered down these two wires, uh, our two bottom wires on our perimeter fence. And I've got the new fence strung up as well. And I went ahead and put those wires a good bit shorter i'd say they're about six inches and probably 12 inches off the ground i did go ahead and run our premier one netting behind the fence uh, on this fence right here and our perimeter i didn't do it right there we're going to test it out see how it works and just kind of a little safety it's not hot uh, it's just kind of more of a visual stop form if they decide to test that wire uh, if they get shot instead of Running through the wire, there's something visual in front of them to kind of slow them down a little bit. Uh, but the pigs are growing good. But all the pigs are growing really, really well. I've got three that's growing a little bit slower, but they were smaller when we got them. Uh, so not too too worried about it. Uh, we ended up just having to sell those as live pigs. That's just fine. Definitely not going to keep them for our breeders. Uh, I don't know if they'll make the cut when it comes time to send them to the processor. Everybody's looking good in our little pasture rotation, pasture pork operation. Uh, really impressed how this worked. Uh, they were in this first, they were in this first little pen for a little too long. I kept them in here for two weeks. They're only going to be in this one for about a week, and then we're going to move them along. The flies are really not an issue. We also haven't had any rain, so that kind of helped with that. Uh, but that's that's the goal. We don't want them tearing up the ground too much, and. We don't want to cause a muddy mess of fly problems. But we still have three more larger pigs and we're growing them in a completely different way. Let me show you that. So these three girls right here are going to be staying in this 10 by 12 pen. Uh, we're going to be trying something a little bit different. As the pigs are in here and as they turn up the dirt and loosen up that compacted really horse poop and goat poop over from over the years, we're going to let them stir in this old hay. Uh, the, somebody gave me this bale. Uh, the net wrap didn't really work on it too well and it was falling apart so i went and grabbed it and as these pigs kind of turn up that dirt we're going to add this hay in as our carbon source and hopefully this is going to turn into some compost that we can spread on the garden uh, spread in pots whatever uh, but they have their water they have a self feeder i added some more capacity on the top of that feeder yesterday and i put these girls in here so this is the first They've been in here for about 24 hours. I'm um, hoping this is gonna work out. If not, we'll turn them out and uh, give them a little bit room. But as I think as long as I can keep them dry in here and out of their manure, uh, this is gonna work well. And hopefully we can get some good compost out of it. I think in the last video y'all saw us work the goats. Uh, since then, we haven't had any issues, knock on wood. No, we haven't lost anybody. The, the two three or three that I was really worried about was with worms. Uh, they actually look a little more lively, eating a little bit better. Appetite's coming back. It's been a little over a week since we've done that. Uh, so everybody's doing good. Some of these girls are looking nice and plump. I'm actually a little bit worried. So I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but 90% of our girls out here are looking extremely, extremely fat and large i'm hoping they're just healthy eating a lot of grass and growing real well but another thing that kind of concerns me 
is they're, they're sharing a fence line with our bucks right now. And I haven't really seen a whole lot of does acting like they're in heat or a whole lot of interest from the bucks as well. Uh, Clyde's got a little bit of staining on his front legs like he's been kind of rutting a little bit. I've seen two or three girls hang out by the fence line and act like they're in heat. Uh, but for the most part, not, not a lot of them have been. It's kind of got me worried that a couple of our young bucks might have bred some of these does early. Uh, we pulled our young bucks out at right at three, three and a half months maybe. I think it was closer to three. I'd have to go back and look at the dates. Uh, but I want to say we got them out here in time. I'm hoping we did. If not, some of these girls might be, be pregnant already. But I'm hoping they're just nice, plump, and fat, uh, especially this girl. I mean, she looks pretty large to me. And a lot of these other girls do as well. So we'll just have to wait and see if that's the case. this is a super short video like i said i really wasn't trying to make a video this afternoon but i got the pigs moved figured i'd go ahead and show that and it's pretty monday afternoon goats are looking good and just kind of wanted to film the goats and the pigs i guess uh, but like i said the feeder pigs they're growing really well they're eating a lot of feed right now drinking a ton of water i really need to set up another 55 gallon drum so they can have two that way i'm not driving through the pasture so much uh, our three larger sows or gilts, uh, they're doing really, really well. They've really put on some weight since they've been here. Really happy with those. Those are the three that we'll be processing ourselves come January, February, uh, probably the first of February. These feeder pigs, uh, they've got to about April, uh, first of May before I'm trying to get them to the process. They're still waiting on the processor to give me some dates. I'm hoping we're gonna get eight slots. Uh, that way we can process two, I mean four, uh, the latter part of April and then four more of the first of May and hopefully sell some whole and half hogs. I haven't really advertised yet uh, just because I want to make sure I have this process of dates before I, I do all that. Waiting on one processor, if he doesn't come through in the week, in a week or so, we're probably going to uh, try to find another processor to use. Uh, but other than that, there's 15 of them. We'll be doing that with eight of them and we'll sell four alive. And we're going to keep one. Uh, to cook on the grill for my birthday in January. And then two more, two of the best looking sows we're gonna hold on to. And hopefully we're gonna start breeding our own piglets or raising our own piglets this year. Uh, probably looking to breed in the spring. Uh, but that's about it for the pigs. That's the plan with them. The goats, hopefully they continue to look fat and healthy. Hopefully none of them is pregnant. I really don't think they are. I just think they, they look really well. Uh, they've been on this is one of our best pastures we have right here it looks pretty rough right here but down in there uh, some good stuff in there hopefully they're just they're grazing good and and converting that grass into red meat and we'll be getting ready to breed these girls in about a month and a half i think uh, right before thanksgiving we're going to put our bucks in and we got to separate our does we got to make two different groups uh, some of them's going with thunder some of them's going with clyde or two new zealand kiko bucks and we'll be nutritionally flushing these does before we do that uh, this year we're just going to use protein tubs uh, each group will get their own protein tub uh, well the bucks are going to get one before breeding the does will get one and then while breeding uh, each of the groups will get one uh, to give them a little bit of extra nutrition hopefully we'll increase our chances of having twins and possibly some triplets this year uh, looking forward to that like i've mentioned in a couple videos back uh, breeding season and during their pregnancy is it's kind of my favorite times i love the kidding but it's a lot of stress i like managing the whole herd in the in the one herd i like managing the whole group it works out really well uh, so look forward to that coming up but i really appreciate you hanging out with us if you haven't already please hit that subscribe button hit the like button hit the notification bell leave us a comment and we'll see y'all on the next one